Okay, I want to do a quick video today. Uh, January 3rd, 2009 was whenever Bitcoin actually launched. Um, that's whenever it actually started running. Uh, so today it makes 12 years old. Um, but man, over the holidays, we've had tremendous move. Uh, the high ended up being, um, let's see, 34,810, almost $35,000. Um, over the weekend, or since the holidays, let's see. Um, let's start from the 31st. Let's see. Let's start from, I said the 31st. Let's actually start from, yeah, we can start at the 30th. So it opened here, and from the high, we went up 27%. Now, my last video a couple days ago, um, I said this was a reversal candle. Uh, we could get another 15 to 20 percent, no problem. Um, and that's pretty much what we got. So, and I think I did that one on like the 26th um, because it was a green two above a green one trading above this nine, which is an entry. So we moved here, we went. Hold up, that's not correct. No, not 40%. Yeah, no, we went 40%. So we got a lot more out of it. And even... Actually, I might have said that from this level. Yeah, it was from this level because I did it on... I think the 27th or 28th I did that video. It was maybe the 28th to 29th. But, yeah, because we had this reversal candle, and then I said, if price kept on creeping up and we take this out, we could get another 15 to 20%. That's what it was. So, if I look at that here, um, we had this 7 close above this 4. That's bullish. We went 20%. So, I said, yeah, 15 to 20%. <laughs> now, all the indicators... Uh, are saying that this is overbought tremendously. Uh, we did have the funding rate. It actually went negative one day. I think it was this day, the first. It went negative, but then it eventually went positive. So whenever this goes negative, that means you have more short sellers. But this is also uh, like a contrarian indicator. So if this is negative, that's a good indication to go long. And if it's positive, that's an indication to go short. Or that maybe you should... You should sell your position. Uh, it is high, but whenever it went negative, I was surprised because we were close to 30,000 and that indicated we could still go up and we did. We went up a lot. So right now we had, uh, this is essentially a green number closing above a prior green number above the nine. <laughs> so our retest area, let me draw this in here, is at 29,688. Let me take this off. I don't need this anymore. So I keep on saying that we're going to get, in this cycle, we'll get 15 to, and I need to open up this mayor multiple band too. So because I uh, did a video, and this is around the 15th of, the, of December. So I said, uh, historically, once we broke this band here, it took 30 to th th between 30 and 35 days, uh, l less than 30 or 35 days, to get to the next band. And we did it in essentially 15, 17 days, right? Uh, we're at that band. Let me show you what, in 2019, uh, we went above it. You know, we kind of retested this area and then we broke it and that was the high. Um, this was driven by, you can look at it, uh, one token. Uh, it was a Ponzi scheme, scam. Um, but it, it fueled a lot of that run in 2019. Uh, this is not what we're seeing this run. This is a bunch of institutional buyers, um, a lot of exuberance, you know, optimism, momentum. But we're pretty much, we pretty much got there. So this is 34,304. Um, I'd also said a couple of days ago that, you know, that's that upper band. So I think we could cool off a little bit um, on this. Are we going to go all the way back? So I do not think we are going to go back below 20,000. That's, I said it, you know, whenever we passed... 10,000 uh, as early as February. We did have that drop, but my post was that uh, the, the next weekly close above 
ten thousand, and we weren't going above. We weren't going back below ten thousand, and that happened. When did that happen? That happened right here, August twenty seventh. Uh, we closed at eleven thousand zero six eight, and I said, you know, we might wick, but we're never going to get a weekly close below ten thousand again. This one was ten two fifty. We never got a weekly close below it. This here, we're not. We're never going. I mean, we we could wick. That'd be a, a big drop. Uh, I don't see it happening. Oh, so from the high all the way here, that'd be like a 45, 50% drop. That's even more. Um, that's even more aggressive than the previous bull cycles, which I don't think we're going to see these big drops. I think we're going to see 15 to 25% drops max. So I have those lines actually on my chart. So this is a 25% drop. And then this would be a 15% drop. Let me move this out the way a little bit. Oh, messed that up. Uh, let me get this a little OCD on getting this exactly right. <laughs> I think you can type it in, but let me just zoom in. See what a 15% drop. It's going to be right by that, right around that retest area. <laughs> Let me go on the one hour chart. Maybe I can fine tune it there. Nope. Don't want to move that. Let me anchor that down so I don't move that again. Oh yeah, this is enjoyable. <laughs> Trying to fix this. <laughs> Let me uh man, I'm almost got it. I almost got it. I almost got it. This is the problem with doing um kind of semi live videos. If you don't have it prepared before, it becomes a little frustrating when we're doing it. There we go. So I got it. And I'm, yeah, I'm streaming. Okay. So, 15%. Let me go back to the daily. 15%. Here. So 15% drop, yeah, would be right around um, that retest area uh, where this 9 is. 25% would be around the retest area for the 4-hour. Pretty much dead on. Um... Some people still believe that we're going to get those 30% drops. So 30% would be about, oh wow, look at that. It'd be right around where that last nine was, uh, the initial retest nine, which I thought we were going to get once we scheduled, once we hit this, um, once we hit this reversal four, but then it just got bought up. I mean, you know, and then 40%, which I do not believe we're going to get, 40% would be around this other retest area, right around 20,000. I don't think we're dropping 40%. <laughs> Uh, no more than 25 uh, from the high, right? So that gives you an idea. Um, so if you're trying to scale into this, you could set your buys, you know, at the 15%, 29,688, you know, at this 26,173. But there's also this, it's called the SAR, it's stop and reversal points. Um, we've kind of been up. This will get broken eventually. So right now it's at 28,7. Uh, maybe it gets broken tomorrow. It's not going to get broken today. Uh, whenever the next print is, could it get broken there? You could set a you can set a uh, a buy there to scale in. Um, we can see what our one hour is doing. That has been amazing. The one hour. Uh, let me bring that indicator up. All right. Let me minimize these. We can see this performance list of trades. Let's do the list of trades. Oh, oh I got it. I gotta set this up real quick. Okay, so latest trade is the latest trade at the top. No, latest trade. Um, here would have gotten you twelve percent. Um, yeah, twelve percent. 
So, and then the previous one before that, not so much, 6%. But hey, I mean, it would have got you in at 29. You would have got out at 32.7. Um, it actually sent that signal um, a couple hours ago. But then we're running up. If this closes above that, it's going to tell you an entry. It's a 2% run up. But I think we're a little overbought. If you wanted to wait, uh, you could, uh, depending on what your, uh, how much capital you put in this. Um, there's other things that you could buy let's so i don't like trading altcoins so altcoins are anything other than bitcoin but we can look at them right so let's look at Ethereum. the big ones i'll look at ethereum and litecoin um what we got what we got here right here so daily right here huge move today 22 percent um it was lagging and then eventually we had a you know it it, it blew up in price um could we have seen that let's look at some Moving averages real quick. Nothing nearly there. We can look at the Ichimoku cloud. That'll probably give us something. <laughs> mm, not so much. Maybe on the daily. Not so much either. These are all been trending up. I mean, this is extreme. Uh, we're on an 8 here. This could be the high. We could get maybe another day tomorrow. Retest area of... That's ah, a big drop. 633. I mean, it could happen. What would that be? That'd be your thirty percent drop. I mean, these could still see those big drops, right? I'm I'm talking about Bitcoin as far as these drops go. So we can see fifteen to thirty uh, percent. We pretty much got to a thousand four hours or anything there. Yeah, we hit a nine. We got a little bit of a pullback. That's a reversal candle, but we are, it's already getting bought up. Um, so there's not much there. We can look at the RSI. These are probably so overbought. I mean, these are, you know. I mean, we'll we're we're right here eighty. We already broke it, so, I mean, man, we could have another day uh, next tomorrow of higher prices. I mean, this RSI, broke this RSI. You know, that's bullish movement. Not quite yet, but um, you can look at it on Bitcoin and how it broke that. Here, right? So we, we moseyed along. For price to keep on going up uh, aggressively, I want to look at this on the daily. <laughs> You know, it kind of had to get past these levels, these 84s. So as soon as it closed above that, probably here, uh, that would have been a 9, so you wouldn't have entered it. But you're, you're, you're right at it. You know, this got bought up. You know, you can see that's a reversal candle, but then it got bought up. You could have entered there and kept on going. So what am I doing now? Let's look at... There's going to be a pullback. There's going to be a correction. Uh, this thing's not going to go up forever. <laughs> uh Let's look at the, I'll, bring, I'll close the RSI out, but we're, we're overbought. Um, this can stay overbought for a while. I mean, we've kind of essentially been overbought since October. We kind of dipped down, but, you know, look at the weekly. Been overbought since October. The monthly is overbought. Um, historically, once this breaks over 80, uh, it stays above that for the most part. So we had it here in February 2017, went to 80. We had a pullback the previous week of 8%. Um, and then we kept on going up. So right now we're in a part of the cycle that's the bullish part of the cycle. If there is a drop, the the dip, you know, 15 to 25%, you could go as, as little as 10%. If there's a dip that is that much from the high to the low, so even on a, I mean, on a weekly, this was, you know, above that, right? Because it, it was totally a 8% drop. But on the from the high to the low, that was 34%. That's for the month, right? But it, the month closed out essentially 8% down, but you had price swings of 30, 30%. So we could, like, I'm, this is what I'm saying. Historically, previously, 30 to 40% drops from the high to the low. Uh, the month only closed 8% down. So if you see these drops of 15, 25%, even as much as 10%, uh, you're not, you know, whenever you're trading, you don't want to get fixated on catching the absolute high and the absolute low. Um, but if you see a dip here within the week, um, it you know, 10% or more, that's a buy the dip uh, scenario. Um, say, you know, you don't exactly catch it. Let's look at the last bull cycle. Um, if I didn't catch it and, it and it did go down, this one went down essentially 16%. So I didn't catch it. But how long am I going to stay in the red? Because a lot of people, they can't handle, you know, their positions being down for an extended amount of time. But this is going to take patience. Um, so I'm down here. I bought it. Say I bought it this week. I'm going to go. I'm you know 
essentially one week into it. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I waited essentially a month, and then I'm back basically even. Same thing here. We had a down week. I say, oh, what about it here? One, two, three weeks. So like three weeks to four weeks, uh, even as early as this one. Um, I'm down here, 17% total drop. Uh, I'm back up to even about three weeks. So if you're going to have a position, you buy it on a dip, 10%, 15%, 20%, whatever, uh, and then you see the price still going down, um, have patience uh, is what, you know, is my advice. You will probably only be in the red for three to four weeks, and then you'll be back break even, and Bitcoin's going higher. This isn't the top. Um, we could see, um, so in 2013, it had like a double double bull market, uh, double peaks. Um, we could see something like that, but you can see that second peak went even higher. So 2013, let me clear this up, let me clean this up. Um, 2013, let's just say January, it was huh, $14 about, went all the way up to uh, about 270 price came down. This this dip is rather large. Um, price came down all the way to... Oh, see, the little dip, the, the longest dip was 80%, right? 80% drop, 75% drop. Also, this next bull cycle, the end of it, I don't think we're going to see these 80% drops like we saw even in the last one. Uh, I think that will be minimized by the holders that are now entering the market. So I think we, we could see essentially maybe 50 to 60% drops, but that's going to be at the end of the cycle. Now, I did I did just say that we could see this double cycle scenario uh, for this um, bull cycle. You're not going to know it until it happens. There's going to be, there should be some indicators indicating that we're at a top. That mayor multiple has been very good. Um, you can look back at 2013 here. We went above it. That was an indication of, you know, the top, it dipped, and then we had another, we had another, all in the same year, we had another run that went even higher, right? So this was at two something, and it went even higher to a thousand. So even if you would have bought at the top, if you would have waited, uh, you would have made um, three, three, four extra money, 300%. You know, all in, I would have bought in April, and then um, eight months later, I'm 4x up, 300%. So, we could see this. Um, if this keeps on running, you know, past this area, and we don't get a significant pull, I'm going to say significant pullback. If we don't get a pullback of at least 10 to 15% in the next couple of weeks, and this goes through, and we're at like 40,000 next week, we could see this double, you know, double, double, double top in the, within a, the same cycle scenario. Um, you know, we could maybe get to the high of this, say, fit. Well, right now we're at 60,000. So say we run up in the next couple of weeks, uh, we see this double cycle scenario, and we it's at 75. Um, and then it dumps, say, 50%, all the way back down to, say, 30, 35. 35 would be 50%. Um, we could get, you know, sideways action for a couple of months. This one did it for, you know, three months. Uh, sideways action for that, and then we could run up rather quickly because even sideways action here in all October, two months later, it was at new all-time highs. So we could see that. That would give this time to kind of mosey on up. It would be at maybe 75 for initial initial spike, and then by the time it revisits it, you know, it could be 200 or something like that. Not saying that that's going to happen. Uh, it's just one scenario. The other scenario is we get a pullback here, Get back to this area, 15 to 25% drop. Um, let's go back to the Coinbase chart. So I use Coinbase. A lot of people don't like Coinbase in this space. Uh, I use Coinbase because the majority of the people in the United States are trading on Coinbase. Um, and that's what they're watching. That's what they're looking at. Uh, there's Binance. There's uh, there's uh, Bitfinex. And there's uh, Bitstamp. Bitstamp, historically... Analyzing the chart there is probably better because they have higher volumes. You want to be on the exchange that has a higher volume. Coinbase does pretty good volume, uh, so it's pretty good. Actually, we can look to see what the volume is on Coinbase. I'll show you real quick. We can go to Coin Market Cap. I know they have that information. 
exchanges. It's yeah, spot price. Um, volume. Yeah, so Binance right now is doing the most volume. That's 24 hours. Uh, they did 17 billion. Coinbase is in second at right on almost four. Kraken, Bitfinex. Let's see, where's Bitstamp? Is Bitstamp. Oh, they did, they're lower. Um, historically, they did do more volume, though. But it looks like Binance is pulling more volume right now. At least at 24-hour time period. Um, so Coinbase, maybe it's, it's getting a little bit better. I haven't looked at these numbers in a while. I'm actually surprised that Coinbase is number two. Uh, all right. Price is moving again. Um, so, if you're looking for a pullback area, like I said, Lucid SAR, or the SAR, the stop or reversal point. Right now it's at 28.7, so you can maybe put a buy-in for 29. You can put a buy-in at the 15% um, drop, which would be 29.6, say, um, but this constantly moves. The 50% will constantly move as we keep on getting higher highs, uh, higher all-time highs. Eventually, this will pull back. We can look at the CMF real quick to see what that is oh, telling me. I mean, it went higher. That was good. Four-hour. We got to the bearish divergence. You know, we could pull back. Looks like this is a support level, right? So, so you, you can even spot support levels on indicators. Right there. So 0.4. So if we, if price starts to pull back and we get a, what time frame are we on? Four hour. And we get a four hour candle that closes below this 0.4, we most likely are going to go lower. Um, this is kind of trending up. So you could also draw another line on this. You could draw a line from here all the way up. Uh, I don't know. That seems extreme, but the CMF could fall down that much, right? So say we go here, it comes down. This could be a support area. Um, right now, you could also draw a line here as another support area. Right there. And we're basically at support, right? So, and this could also be drawn as a channel. There's so many things, there's so many ways to see this stuff. Not a perfect channel, but, you know, gives you an idea of where it could travel, right? And this is kind of converging together. Um... So yeah, here, that's a support line, diagonal support line. We break below that. That's also showing kind of another indicator or some support area at 0.4. This is another thing that can show you support, right? So you're getting all these patterns that are kind of aligning together. Here, if I extend it back and I draw it down a little bit more of an angle, that could be a longer term uh, for the four hour. Let's see what we have on the hour. Can we do something like this on the hour? <laughs> Yeah, see, it's a little different. You could, but you draw it way back here. Not as steep, but the channel looks, I mean, this also looks like a channel. Kind of. So it's opening, but. So yeah, um, I think if we get a four hour close below this CMF, oh, that's on the daily, here. Uh, point four, that's going to indicate we're going to go lower. Um, as far as price goes, CMF's going to go lower. CMF now can can go lower and price can go higher. That's the bullish divergence I'm talking about. But um, right now, I mean, we've gone up so much. This RSI is not going to stay up here forever. We can look at old site. I mean, eventually it pulls back, right? Eventually. We're not going to stay up here for the next uh, $30,000 run, $10,000 run. Uh, we're getting pretty close to a top area. <laughs> um you know, we come back, maybe. So usually on these indicators, especially the RSI, uh, if it goes oversold, it tends to find support at around 50 to 40. And where did this find support? At 50. If I go over, if I go, okay, that's an overbought scenario. If I go oversold, uh, it tends to find resistance at 60 to 50. Where did this one find resistance at? 57, almost 60. Price pulled back and then it broke through it. And that's an indicate that's an indication of higher prices, right? So I'm um, here. I would draw a support line. I mean a resistance line here. We broke it. You can I mean even the TD sequential is lining up here. 
And I've never looked. I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at this cold. At this, you know, live. So we had a nine here on the RSI resistance. Resistance. TD sequential didn't quite line up. Really, I guess until here, we had a green number, the five that closed above the four, that closed above the nine. Now, you did have a green 2 close above the 9, but it didn't close above the high. So you could have taken it there, and you did break the resistance on the RSI, but you would have really entered here. And then you would have had a, say you got it at the high, you would have had an initial jump in two days of 15%. Essentially, it went up 20%. Oversold area, res support, support, went higher, and then broke through. Um, but that would have been a setup for that trade, right? I got my green nine. I got my green nine, green number above a prior green number. I broke my resistance on the RSI. RSI is trending up. We had a reversal candle, kind of went sideways, went higher. Like I said, this got bought up. It didn't hold there. We retested it, and we kind of went sideways. And then eventually, um, we got a nine here. This T sequential, man. I mean, it's so good. Uh, we got a nine here, and I trade the nines. There is another. There's a whole book on this that has something called combo thirteens, aggressive thirteens, where uh, you can get continuous counts. Um, I have a script for that here. Um, oh, I have too many scripts open. I don't use it. The TD nines are good, um, but you can see here where there's an ag that's an aggressive thirteen. That's a cell um, of a continuation of a trend that. I mean, the nines are good. The nines are very good. Here's a 13, uh, where the count continued right at the 13. We had a big drop. So that, I mean, that would have said, you know, that was a good sell signal. Uh, you had an aggressive 13 with a nine, but it still went higher. Um, those aggressive 13s, I don't find work as, as well. Um, some people do say that they work amazing. This is the nine with an aggressive 13 right here. That's a sell signal. Uh, but, I mean, it did give you a little bit of a pullback, but not that much. Green 2, close above a green 1, closing above the 9, buy-in, continuation of the trend. Um, sometimes it is that simple. It is that simple. Green 2, above green 1, above the 9, go. Um, I mean, you can see it everywhere here. Um, these are essentially continuations of the count. This code isn't written that way, but I can show you on this one. Um Green number above prior green number above the nine. I mean, it did retest it. We did get another nine, but we had another big jump. So sometimes it doesn't play out basically like the textbook, but a lot of times it's really good. And this TD sequential has given me a lot of uh, confidence in my trading. It's the basis for my trading. Um, I'm constantly going back to that book and reading, refreshing. There's so many different setups and things you can see with this. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I said, I don't like to trade those other crypto markets, but let's look at them anyway. So Litecoin, personally, I looked at it, uh, a, a daily close above 147 is a buy, right? You had a previous high here, all the way back from Feb, from February. Um, oh, that's a retest level. Where's, where's my, no, it was the high. It was the market right here, right here, right here. So back in, uh, June, 2019, um, 146, I thought it was 147. As soon as you got a day to close above that, that's a buy. Um, we are a little over, over, um, overbought. This next resistance level is right here at 175. This is gonna, so this is going to kind of make a pattern called a Adam and Eve pattern. Um, don't tell me, don't ask me where these, where these uh, names come from. I just study them and kind of know. Um, so here, right, this really would be, I mean, that kind of is it. And then it's a, it's like a U pattern. I'm looking for my U pattern. Where is it at? Here it is. Curve. Here. No, oh, this is green. doesn't matter. Right? So that's what that is. That's an Adam and Eve we can we can google it adam and eve pattern boom 
right here. See, Adam and Eve. And that's what we see there, Adam and Eve. Um, targets for that are just like those cup and handles. It's the height. So initially it's going to be this one. There. Break out here. 247. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I wanted to go over real quick. Um, Ethereum doesn't really have another pattern. I don't think it has a pattern like that. Let's see. I know this video is running long. I'm trying to cut it short, but... Um, we're pretty much at resistance, 883. We're between these two. Um, next resistance level is 1,000. So retest area, 8. Retest area, I don't think I don't, we could get that much of a drop. Um, 4 hour, 9. 9, we had a little bit of reversal. So here, look, 9, sideways, retest. Green 2, mm, uh, green 2 above a green 1. Buy here, same thing here. Uh, green two above a green one above this nine. Enter the trade. Move sideways. Blew up. So, yeah. Um, traditional markets. The more act is this week uh, when they vote in the Senate. It's the fifth. Oh no, no the runoff is the fifth in Georgia. That's going to determine the uh, seating uh, in the Senate. If it's fifty-fifty, uh, and if the Democrats get it, tiebreaker goes to the vice president. Um, in that case, that more act, it can go 50-50, and then the vice president would have the overriding vote, and weed stocks are going to go through the roof. Um, right now, there's a support line here on the four-hour. Um, you know, we're on the seven. We'll, we'll probably hit an eight, nine, and then we can go higher. But, all right. Thanks for watching.